Uh, on your left, there's a weapon dropped. Where? Was? Oh, no, there, there is. It's a pistol. Around you. Around you. I see a sorry. Come on, man. We believe in you. <laughs> You're mad. What's going on everybody? Tough on Dirt, Gentle on Carpet here and uh, today we're going to be talking about kiting a little bit. You'll notice that my team is slowly but surely dying. I think this one goes out. Yep, there goes a flying body right now. And so we take out that last, oh we don't, we take out that last flush pound, but really this is where the kiting begins. We're at about 48, 47 zombies left. We got me, we got the medic, and this is the point where we're going to run. And so this whole episode is going to be based on kiting and I kind of want to give you guys a few points and tips on exactly how kiting works, how you can stay alive, and how you can keep your teammates alive while you're kiting if you have a teammate with you. Now I'm going to come back to this footage in a little bit, but for now I want to jump over to the three basic phases of a kite. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys the uh, definition of kiting in Killing Floor 2 if you don't know it already. Basically, kiting is when you run around the map and actually have Zeds follow you. And they follow you kind of like you would a kite, and so you keep moving and the Zeds keep moving, you're kind of dragging them along and leading them where you want to go. And so this means that you have all the Zeds behind you and you can shoot into a dense number of Zeds at once and kill them all, rather than trying to take them all in wave by wave and getting outnumbered. This also means that you have to consistently keep moving throughout the game. Because kiting is really requires a lot of movement. You need to take out what you can, but you also need to keep moving because you don't want to get surrounded. And so kiting is usually done with one to two people. Occasionally, you can have larger groups than one to two, but I generally find it going with one to two people. Any group bigger than that can actually do well just holding their space and sitting down. And so we're basically in the first stage of kiting so far in this scene. Here we have um, the two of us just running around, killing what we can, trying to get rid of all the small zeds before they pile up. And that's basically the phase one of kiting. Now we're going to get into phase two here a little bit. Basically we're going to run a lot more. We notice that there's too many zeds around here and so we're just trying to get out of here. We're not trying to kill anything per se. We're trying to do a little bit of damage but we're just trying to get away. So phase one is killing what you can. Phase two is running like hell. And phase two of kiting is probably the longest part of the game. Basically, you're just going to keep running, do a little bit of damage, try to pick off the small stuff, and really leave the big stuff in your wake, and you're going to go ahead and kill that later during the third part of your uh, kiting adventure. <laughs> so as we come into this square, you'll notice that uh, we kind of hold our ground a little bit more. There's only 12 Zeds left at this point, so we can really go in and clean up whatever's left over. We got Flesh Pound coming up, and usually at this point is the time you'll want to take a look at Scrakes as well, because Scrakes will not rage until you shoot them, so you can kite them throughout the entirety of the game, even if, even if they spawn early. We're, we're going to go ahead and take out this Scrake if we can, or this Flesh Pound if we can. Ooh, this is scary. Nice. And then we're going to go ahead and finish off the last of it, and this is really stage three. Basically, you finish off what's left over once you have a firm idea that you can take all of them at once. Now I'm going to bring it back to solo kiting a little bit. Uh, at this point, it's just me and my medic alive. And with solo kiting, basically what happens is usually all your teammates are dying on you and you're going to be the last one left. And so in this case, run like hell is going to be your number one priority. You're not going to go ahead and kill what you can. You're going to just run. You're going to try to get everything to spawn on the map and get it all behind you so you're not going to run into any walls like I just did. So if all your do teammates do die and there's one or two of you left, be sure to heal up each other. You'll notice that my medic's healing me even though she herself is about to die. Come here medic, let me heal you. And um, basically you want to focus on each other and healing each other because if you ever notice when you heal somebody, your syringe gun refills twice as fast as opposed to if you heal yourself. Step number two in kiting is really to conserve ammo. You'll notice I'm using my knife a lot. It's partially because I'm out of grenades because I wasn't expecting to be kiting, but also partially because I don't want to use my pistol anymore. I want to save that ammo for when I have to shoot something like a bloat or say a uh, husk. I can't really approach those guys too closely and it's a lot easier to take out this small stuff with a knife. 
The third tip I want to give you guys is to keep moving. Whenever you're kiting a bunch's edge, you really want to stay going forward. And you really want to go ahead and take out whatever's in front of you if you can. If you can't, just run beside it. You'll notice how I left that crawler and that uh, claw back there because I really didn't want to take care of him right now. I just want to get the hell out of here and get away from that husk and that siren. Alright, and, and it's at this point where my medic dies right there. Um, you'll notice I still got 22 Zeds to go, two of them being a husk, two of them being a husk and one of them being a scrape. Unfortunately, I have exactly zero ammo at this point. I think I have a couple bullets left and a, maybe a grenade in my grenade launcher left, but really I'm out of ammo and I can't contest this husk. I cannot contest this grape for sure. So if you guys will bear with me, step five is find some ammo. So after you've gotten your ammo and you've taken out most of the small zeds either using your knife or using a little bit of your pistol and you still have a scrape chasing you around the map, there's one thing that you can do that can really offset these zeds and that is to go the harder path to take. Basically you're going to jump off whatever you can, you're going to go around whatever rocks, whatever crags you can because these zeds Although they're pretty good at following you, they have a very hard time of understanding any height change at all. And so jumping around corners, jumping over ledges, as you can see, really kind of affects what <laughs> affects the Zed. And I do not advise fighting a Zed with a knife. That was one of my, uh, or fighting a chainsaw with a knife. That was one of my uh, less, un less impressive acts of the day. But as you'll see here, moving around, um, the map kind of vertically gets them really, really confused. At this point in the game, I'd used up my flamethrower, I'd used up my grenade launcher, I'd used up all my pistol shots, and I did not want to fight a Scrake with a knife. Where was? Oh, no, there, there is. It's a pistol. Front you. Front you. I am CSR. Come on, man. We believe in you. You're not, bro. Ah! <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. So, just to recap for you guys, we got a few steps here to help you, you know, keep kiting. First off, you gotta run, you gotta keep moving. Uh, conserve ammo is a huge one. You wanna use your knife or your pistol at most when you realize that you're gonna be kiting for a while. You wanna heal your teammates. Healing your teammates is important. Don't sacrifice yourself for your teammate, but definitely heal your teammate. Uh, keep moving again, like I said. Don't stop and try to take out a bunch of Zeds. If you can kill a few, that's great, but really keep moving. And finally, find all those ammo boxes for sure. Ammo boxes are extremely important. Important. Oh yeah, and don't forget, uh, verticality really, really messes up Zeds, and they have no clue what to do. So, you, you know, think vertical and try to jump around things and jump over ledges if you can, because every little step will help. And finally... There is one service announcement I'd like to make to you guys. Before kiting, be respectful of everyone's time. And, you know, ask if you should just commit suicide instead. Because, to be honest, you may, they may not want to spend 30 minutes watching you kite around a bunch of Zeds. Anyway, this has been a public service announcement from Tough on Dirt Channel on Carpet. Thank you guys so much for watching. And let me know if you have any comments below or anything you'd like me to uh, do here in Killing 4-2. I'd love to hear from you guys.